Step outside of your comfort zone. See the world with a whole new perspective. Join us and experience the unexplained on the Paranormal View. And welcome everybody right here to the Paranormal View on the Parex Radio Network. I want to thank everybody for taking the time to be with us tonight. Those listening here in the chat room and those listening from around the world. We appreciate each and every one of you. If uh, you are listening from somewhere else around the world and you want to come over, come over to para-x.com and click on the uh, chat now button up at the top and you can uh, get right in with all these wonderful people and interact with them and interact with us and be able to ask questions of our guests. So uh, do that. If you do have questions and you don't want to come over to the chat room, you can still ask a question by sending it to the paranormal view at gmail.com and we will just put attention question and we will get those answered for you uh, appreciate that a um, couple of things uh, tonight before we actually get started uh, next week uh, we will be uh, at Gettysburg paranormal view will be and on uh, Friday the 13th, we'll be doing an investigation at the Gettysburg Brew Works, which uh, was a haunted field hospital, or it is a haunted field hospital. It was a field hospital, but it's haunted now, put it that way. And uh, we'll be doing an investigation there on Friday the 13th, which uh, makes it even better, done it, 13th. And then uh, Saturday night, uh, we'll be doing our show live from the Ghost Exchange, and then we'll do an investigation there afterwards. And then Saturday during the day, we'll be out and around on the battlefield and and just having a good old time, providing it don't rain, uh, which I hope it don't. Uh, So with that, uh, if you uh, would like to see about coming with us, uh, just get on uh, Facebook and look. Henry Foister up, send me a message, and I'll give you all the details if you wanted to go there, and we'll get you hooked up. So, um, with that, uh, let's see here. Looks like I got Jeff coming in now, so hold on here. Let me get him in. Uh, And then, uh, once I get him in here, we'll be good to go. Yeah. So, this is live television. Yes, it is. <laughs> Radio. Yes. Sorry. Oh, you finally made it. All right. um, yeah, at the last second, my friends went out and they said, oh, someone's going to drop off four baby possums. I'm like, you know, I have a show at five o'clock and I had to wait for this woman to drive it. She only just showed up like minutes ago and I had to set them up in a carrier. And I... <laughs> but they're super cute and I love possums and it's a shame they're going to be going off to somebody else to be raised tomorrow. I'm like, dang it, they're so cute. All right. Well, we uh, we just got on. We got our guests with us, and uh, I figure we might as well just go ahead and introduce them and get started because I'm sure we're going to have a lot of questions tonight. So uh, you do have the info for that, right? I have minimal information. Uh, what I have is uh, that our guest would be Becky uh, McKitty Gidson or Guidson. I'm not 100% sure because I was hoping to ask that before the show. Yeah. Uh, and they're with the, uh, she's with the uh, Tucson Ghost Company, which hosts ghost tours as well as paranormal investigation and also hosts a radio, uh, radio show or podcast called Mystery uh, Explained, which airs Thursday nights at Voices Carry Radio. Uh, so welcome, Betty uh, McKitty Gibson, and uh, I possibly somebody else. I'm not sure. Yes. <laughs> it's Will. You see, I, all I heard was Ghost Company. I'm like, uh, that could be like, oh, uh, and now Microsoft, and you know, I don't know who. Uh, I sent you all the information. You so, sent me. <laughs> yeah, I did everything you that I got. Them. I forwarded to you and to yes. Barbara. So, do you know how much digging I had to do to get beyond the fact her name was Becky? Yeah, you carry a big shovel. Yeah. What? So. what? <laughs> I don't know. You're going to do digging, carry your big shovel. Well, I, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> anyway, what I was able to find. We want to we wanna welcome uh, Becky and Will to the show tonight. Uh, they yeah. do a lot of stuff out in uh, Tucson, uh, yeah. a whole bunch of different things, because they're the owners of the uh, Tucson Ghost Company, and there's a lot uh, involved with that. 
I think first I uh, want to welcome you guys. Thank so, you. Thank you. All right, for taking the time to be with us. And I, I guess right to start with, how did you guys get involved into the paranormal to start with? Well, that's going to be a real simple one. You can just ask Becky how it all started. <laughs> and I'm dumb. Uh, basically, I've always had experiences my whole life. And just, I actually saw the show Ghost Hunters on TV, and that even got me more interested. And I started looking up tours around Tucson, and there wasn't any. And I found one in Bisbee, and I got to know that owner, and I ended up working with her. And out of the blue, I ended up with my own company, which I never expected to do. And then everything else just kind of followed. And so it was just one thing after another. It was as if it was meant to be, basically. Well, believe it or not, that's the way I got started was through the Ghost Hunters. Getting a weird echo. Yeah, there was a little bit of a feedback. Hopefully, it clears uh, back up. I I should point out I spent a night at the hotel in Bisbee, Arizona, back when I had a girlfriend who actually lived in Tucson. So I wish I had known about you guys then, obviously, because I used to go to uh, Tucson and Sierra Vista a lot. Yeah, that's not far away. Yeah, and uh, but we we went down to uh, uh, Tombstone briefly, and then we went over to Bisbee, which just blew my mind. And how beautiful Bisbee is! This that 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 weird hive-like look that it has. Yeah, due to the fact and, uh, that there was a little mine. Yeah, oh yeah, well we took the mine tour as well, um, but just going through that that tunnel that on the highway and suddenly Bisbee just shows up on the left, and we're like, this is just incredible. And I was impressed with all the artistry work and the very bohemian lifestyle Bisbee seems to have. Uh, and I wish again at the time that I had known that I was staying in a haunted hotel, which I did not know. I just thought it was some place to sleep that night. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like... Town's got a lot of history to it. Well, back in the day, was was that pretty much a, an old western town like Tombstone? Actually, no. It was actually just a mining community back in the day. Um, so the only people that really lived there were the miners and their families. Huh. Uh, probably, and then the saloons and everybody trying to take the money away from the miners, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. you're making money back then. you got to be gambling on it. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if it's only miners in, in the little community there. I mean, you got to have something to do. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you, guys do, uh, you guys do three types of... Uh, tours yes we do uh, a a walking tour a driving tour and then we actually have one that's actually a ghost experience where you actually get to be a paranormal investigator for a couple hours would you guys have a lot of people that uh, does those i mean during the busy season during the busy season usually october and first part of november oh yeah it gets crazy yeah, we basically tell our friends that they're not going to hear from us and from about the end of September to the beginning of November, we disappear because we get so busy with the company. Wow. So how- yeah, when, I, when I saw the, uh, the aspect on your site, uh, the ghost experience, it took me a second to figure whether or not it was uh, an actual paranormal investigation or if it was some sort of immersive theater, which I've done, uh, so I wasn't sure. Yeah, that we actually hand out uh, ghost hunting equipment, and we let them uh, investigate a building. Cool. And, and which build? Or is it the Cochini? Um, is that the old? The, I think it was Cochini. It looked like in my brain. La, La Casina. La Casina. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, the building. It, it, there's several parts of that building. Um, there's an outdoor courtyard that there's different areas you can go into, and then there is one building that kind of circulars around. Um, so it's a big enough space, and we spend usually an hour inside the building and an hour outside in the courtyard when we do that. What are some of the hauntings that happened at La Casina? 
uh, about two weeks ago, maybe it was, uh, we heard furniture being dragged. And we're basically the only ones there when we do the investigation, so there's no one rearranging furniture while we're there. Um, and then about three months, four months ago, we had a radio turn on by itself. So <laughs> we've had some interesting things that have gone on for sure while we've been there. Yeah, it sounds pretty darn active. <laughs> Yeah, it can be, you know, and then like every haunted place, you know, there's times that it gets quiet and, uh, you know, we don't know from time to time what's going to happen. You know, and I probably <clears throat> would think that the more people that you had in there, uh, it kind of stirs up the energy anyway. As sometimes it does. Um, one of the famous haunts of La Cocina is actually a little girl, and she can be kind of shy, though. So she usually gets more active when uh, there's other younger people around. Uh, oh, for example, when we take our daughters in there, she tends to get more active. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Now, do you, uh, when you do these experiences, do you take trigger objects in, like a doll or something like that? And have you had ex any luck with it? Uh, we actually have a stuffed dog that we call Boo. Um, and he has, like, the REM pod inside of him. And we will get the little girl playing with him sometimes. And he'll go crazy sometimes. Um, lately, they haven't been playing with that one, though. Yeah, I think they got tired of our dog. Yeah. <laughs> I think they, they get used to seeing us. They they literally, the spirits there know us. They literally do. And it's like they get tired of us bringing in the same things, I think, sometimes. And they're like, okay, bring something new. We're tired of this. Come on. <laughs> so it's literally like it's, oh, it's these two. Yeah, pretty much. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think it actually goes more along the lines. Of, oh God, these two people again! What the <laughs> hell. You know, uh, the more that you go into a place, and I don't mean with fifty or sixty people at a time, but the more that just a couple of people go into a place that uh, is haunted or has spirits in it, uh, they do tend to recognize you and. Uh, they will, they will interact with you. Um, so I think yeah, it's, I think it's yeah. really neat that they do that. Oh yeah. That, you know, we get our names a lot in the EVPs because they're like, Oh, it's them again. Hi. You know? <laughs> um, but yeah, sometimes I think they do get sick of us, but sometimes I think they get excited. Uh, yes, I, I think so. Um, I just want to remind everybody, if you do have questions here in the chat room, you can private chat them to either Henry Foister or Ceiling Cat, and uh, we will get those uh, questions answered for you. Uh, so, uh, how many people do you have in your group? On our paranormal team, right now we are at, uh, not including Will and I, I think we got 11 members now. Because we just accepted two more. You don't take all of them, though, on an investigation, do you? No. Oh, no. No, we actually just recently split our team in two. Okay. Into what? Oh, wait. Into two different groups. I, no, I, it's an old joke, sorry. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff is like that. You'll have to get used to his humor. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So... Uh, so, do you do a lot of uh, private investigations? About 90% of what we do is private investigations. Um, we'll do a business here and there, but most of it is for residents. And is is there that much uh, people out there that does have problems with spirits or uh, say that they've got them in their homes? I don't some of them do. Some of them are just. Uh, We're able to debunk. Let's word it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be kind about it. We were able to debunk some of the hauntings. So. 
Yeah, you think that uh, I think a lot of people get inspired by ghost hunters to go out and investigate, but a lot of them also uh, get a little shooken up and frightened and think that every sound is a ghost. Yes. Yeah, we accept that. And then we get people that think it's going to be the greatest thing they ever do and then realize, wow, this is pretty boring. Uh, (laughs) Yes, yes. Uh, Because they don't realize that you spend a lot of time sitting around doing absolutely nothing but talking to walls. That's it. Yeah. And then once you go and and review your stuff, there's a lot of times that there's nothing on there. (laughs) Yes. Yep. But then there's that one instance when you'll be listening, you say, oh, wait, what did I just hear? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, uh, you get a lot of that, um, which isn't just out there. That is everywhere that uh, you do investigations. And uh, speaking of uh, the ghost hunters, that was uh, what got me started into it. Uh, I was the kind of person that if somebody said that place is haunted or if I walked past something or seen an old building that just even looked like it might be a haunted place, I'd walk to the other side, uh, wouldn't go nowhere near, didn't want nothing to do with a ghost. And uh, (laughs) my wife uh, asked me to uh, come and watch the ghost hunters with her one time. She said, "You'll, you'll like this. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll watch it. And, uh, the first one that I watched, they were, was using the K2 meter. I guess it was a new piece of equipment that had just gotten and uh, was using it. And they was asking questions and all of a sudden them lights start going up. And I said, you know, if, if that really works and they can communicate with a ghost, I said, that might be pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so I I got around and was looking to see if they had a TAPS group around me, and they didn't. But I found a place in Kentucky called the uh, uh, Kentucky Area Paranormal Society, CAPS. And uh, I got on their site and was looking around, and they said, oh, listen to, you know, live, live shows and chat room and stuff and i said oh this might be neat so i got into para x and started uh doing that and and was i was just amazed that people was actually communicating or or talking about the paranormal and uh the more that i was in there the owners uh asked me said uh, you want to go on an investigation with us and I said, I don't know, and uh, there's a place that was right around uh, the corner from where I live called the Sora Gopper House, and they wanted me to go there and get something set up for them, and they said, when we do, you can go with us, and I did, and that's when they asked me if I wanted to do a radio show. I said, I don't know nothing about it. They said, well, you'll, you'll be good at it, so I've been doing it now for almost nine years, so. Almost time, nice. I guess, close to it. So, yeah, Becky's got a really interesting story on how all, all this pretty much fell into her. Cause she's always had an interest in the paranormal since before I even knew her, but she never mentioned anything about it. <laughs> so, uh, she was scrolling through TV one day, came across Ghost Ghost Hunters, watched the show, comes up to me and goes, uh. I found this ghost tour down in Bisbee that I want to go take. I was like, okay, go take it. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. He never knew that would lead to us owning this company. uh... (laughs) So she goes and takes this tour, gets to know Renee Harper, and then uh, a couple weeks later she calls me up while I'm at work and she goes, Honey, how do you feel about buying a ghost tour company? I was like, will, will it make you happy? And she's all, yes. So I said, okay, go ahead. <laughs> and then that, you, that's literally about how it came about, too. <laughs> and then you got so, rooked into it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Well, well, somebody's got to pay for everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> then, then it's what am I actually paying for? <laughs> Her happiness. <laughs> uh. But then while she's doing that, she got into uh, people asking her about uh, being able to investigate haunted places. So she searched around. She found a, a paranormal team that was affiliated with TAPS. And uh, they accepted her on, and they were pretty much on the downside of being a team. Breaking up, yeah. And this guy called her up saying, hey, I really need this building investigated. And uh, she went back to the team and told them about it, and they're all, well, we don't have the time for it. So she asked them, you know, do you mind if I grab a couple people and go investigate myself. They told him, no, go right ahead. And that's how Tucson Ghost Society got formed. Yeah, everything just kind of happened on its own, basically, <laughs> once I bought the rights. To, well, actually, once I started watching Ghost Hunters on TV, it just kind of uh, all went from there, and everything just kind of actually came to me after I looked for that one ghost hunt. That's all I looked for was one ghost hunt. And everything else kind of came to me after that. Well, that's kind of paranormal in itself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the funny thing is she didn't want to tell me about it originally because she thought I'd think she's crazy. <laughs> that's true. And you still think that anyway, but that's beside the point. <laughs> well, that's, that's because you are. <laughs> I should point out, though, that uh, for your uh, your paranormal investigation that you bring people on... Considering how often I've seen these kind of uh, uh, experiences done, yours are remarkably affordable at $25 per person as opposed to, you know, and, and you even have discounts for 10 or more people um, that usually they're considerably more like Waverly Hills and, and other places that are like, hey, we make our money by letting people walk through our, our buildings. Right. Yeah. See, we're not trying to get rich off it. We're just trying to support the company with what it can make. And we're trying to educate the public on proper ways to do things. Uh, we don't, I mean, quite honestly, we know that there's a ton of paranormal groups out there in this world. There's a ton here in Tucson. But we've heard horror stories about people bringing up their own groups and doing things the wrong way and stirring up activity and basically, we really, truly want to educate people along with entertaining them on how to do things properly and uh, give them some fun while we can do that at the same time. You know, we aren't looking to get rich. I know that this is a company that we'll never get rich with, but... Well, you, you certainly found the right uh, niche in which not to get rich. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we spend more than we make <laughs> yeah. because we're constantly buying new paranormal equipment for the team. And, of course, our team doesn't charge. So I, I don't think we've actually really earned a profit yet. <laughs> no, because I keep spending money. Yeah. <laughs> if you get into this get to into make this money, to it's money. the wrong place. place. Yeah. It's, and that's another thing that Becky... And I agree with her on this is, you know, there's people out there that have their teams and they're charging people to go investigate their houses. And what it boils down to is what are they really accomplishing when they do that? I mean, you can go into a location, investigate it. You can get all the EVPs in the world. But what are you really doing for the people when you go and investigate? Are you actually getting rid of what's happening? Are you bringing them peace of mind to where they can be okay with living in a haunted place or not being living in a haunted place. Everything is done on nothing really scientifically proven to be accurate. Absolutely. But you, but you got people going out there charging three, $400 to go and investigate somebody's house, which they're basically making money off of something they cannot prove, prove or prove. disprove. Right. Uh, you can't prove it's there. You can't prove that you removed it. 
you don't even know if you know how to remove it because you don't know what it is. Uh, there's a lot of variables that you know people just don't quite get. Right. Yeah, it, it's, it's there's no professional out there that can say this is how it is. This is what you need to do. This is the way you go about doing it. It's all theories. There's yeah. no one person that can say this is 100 percent true. Right. So, and that's one thing that I use the tours and all these things to help educate people that, you know, there is no expert in this field. We're all going off of theories. We're all going off of what we have learned, but we're not an expert. We can't tell you for sure if we do this, the ghost is going to be gone because the ghost has a mind of its own. (laughs) We can't control it. If we could, then maybe we could get rich, but we can't. (laughs) No. It's not like taking your car into your mechanic and saying, hey, I got a knock. Can you take care of it? Right. Right. (laughs) I mean, I got a ghost. Can you get rid of it? Uh, Well, I can come investigate and see what we can do for you. But But we can't guarantee it. Yeah. Yeah. When I uh, go to investigate uh, places, we never charge anything. I just like going to... uh, see if uh, we can find out if there's anything there. Yeah. That's basically what we do, and if we find something, we'll we'll go back to them and let them know, hey, look, this is what we found. Nothing to be worried about. If they aggravate you, just tell them to leave you alone. If they do, they do. If they don't, well, don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that. <laughs> you're on your own. No, <laughs> we don't tell them that. <laughs> I think all these uh, paranormal shows makes it to where people think that there's a lot more bad stuff out there than what really is. Most of it's just spirits from people who had lived here. Right. Yeah. Of all the cases we've been on, and we've been on probably well over 100 now. I've lost count. Um, I mean, we haven't run into anything what people would call demonic. We've had like one or two grumpy, you know, spirits that we've dealt with, but nothing. Nothing evil, nothing demonic. Yeah. I've, I've actually gone out with uh, groups that if there's the slightest bit of a grumpy ghost, they're like, oh, it must be dem- demonic. I'm like, where do you jump to that conclusion? Right. <laughs> They, they watch too much TV, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it's just a ghost who's sort of in a get-off-my-lawn kind of attitude. It's, right. Yeah. And that's what we've run into, you know, just that grumpy old man or whatever that's like, this. these people are in my house, I want them out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> or maybe he's having a bad day. His coffee was cold when he got up that morning. <laughs> you know, you never know. <laughs> So, Actually, more true than you think, you know. Oh, yeah. uh, it, it's probably, and a lot of it, too, is uh, you don't know who was in there investigating before you. That maybe that spirit just had a bad run-in with another group and does not like you pull out a K2 meter and it's going, uh-oh. Right. <laughs> it, it's Bag- Baggins guy again. Uh... <laughs> we, we actually investigated a location right after he got done doing it. Oh, sh- that must have been fun. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, we got into Slaughterhouse. Uh, I, probably like three weeks after uh, that show was out here. And, uh, of course, it aired. And, you know, they were saying that everything was demonic. Mm-hmm. But, um, no, it, it's it's a prankster. The ghosts there are prank pranksters. They like to prank people. That's what they like to do. And it's the perfect building to do it in. Cause yeah, because it's, it's a haunted attraction. It's a haunted attraction. They've got... Uh, all these mazes that you go through with all kinds of haunted stuff in it to try and scare the crap out of you. So if you're they, a prankster... They, yeah, they fit in perfectly in that building. What better place to be than someplace you can actually freak people out? <laughs> and you don't have to pay them or nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they get the extra freak. You know, and I've often... I don't do fake haunted houses. Like, I don't do those haunted attractions. I don't like them. Um, but... You know, I often wonder if people that went through that, if they actually encountered the ghost there and didn't realize it, thinking it was one of the actors or something. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> if you really want to see how much Becky does not like haunted attractions, oh god, <laughs> watch the YouTube video we have of Slaughterhouse, and you will hear her cussing and screaming at me the whole time walking through one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, he did things on purpose because he knows I don't like these things. I mean, I'll go into a real haunted house any day of the week. Give me, you know, those fake haunted attractions. I hate them. And we're going through the attraction to see, you know, what kind of EMF ratings we're getting, what kind of EVPs we're getting. And he's going through this one, and it's a lot of blood and gore and all that yucky stuff. And I'm not one for mannequins, and I'm not one for clowns. Now, I can stand clowns in a certain environment, but in a haunted attraction, no. And he was ahead of me. I was in the middle, and my co-host of Mysteries Explained was uh, behind me. And Will went through this room, saw what was in it, hurried up and closed the curtain. So when I opened it, I would be in shock of what was there. And he didn't warn me about it. And so Dave has it in the video. You can hear me opening the curtain and start cursing (laughs) at Will because there's this huge clown mannequin. And I believe it had like blood or something all over it. And I was just like, oh, my God. And you got to remember, we're in the pitch black when we're doing this, too. So it's only the flashlights giving us light. (laughs) So, yeah, I screamed a bit. I so is that only live attractions, or do horror films? Are you do you avoid horror films as well? I know I Henry. Don't, I don't do horror films either. I don't mind horror films. I don't like the horror films they make now because they're oh, not. So they're actually, you you'll love Quiet Place because it's all suspense. Is it? Yeah, because a lot of the ones like Hostel and all that stuff, they're more like uh, Bloodfest movies That's, than they are. Oddly yeah. enough, oddly enough, I, I didn't see Hostel when it came out because I thought it was just going to be torture porn and i i went to see another film called wolf creek because it's uh it's tr- both i saw both trailers i saw hostel and wolf creek wolf creek looked like just a thriller and hostel looked like torture porn i went to wolf creek and it was all torture porn i'm like well this is a waste of you know 100 minutes and then later my then roommate said you know hostels on cable i said well i don't really want to see it. he says no it's really good and i watched it and it was really good and all the violence was implied I'm like, why didn't they let me know that in the trailer? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I saw the new A Quiet Place, which is a very excellent, technically a monster movie, uh, but it's all suspense. The old 1940s type of suspense where they knew how to make scary movies that you're very invested in the characters. And uh, there are some jump scares, but not a whole lot of, uh, you know, that uh, and uh, the the violence is very you know uh, play- National Geographic you know showing you know and now the cheetah will take down the gazelle and it's done so fast you're like oh wait what yeah they play on your senses instead of try to visually stimulate you exactly yeah and I I I can't personally handle movies like that Will was watching one I can't even remember what it was. And I was starting to get, you know, into it a little bit. And I just, I had to leave it. To me, <laughs> that that tension and stuff, it literally gets to me. Like, I get so emotionally involved in it that I, I can't. It's, I have to watch comedies or something. I cannot watch anything that's intense. Because to me, I get too emotionally involved in it. And it feels too real to me. Well, you so do I weird- watch that. That the the physiological responses our bodies have for, uh, are identical for both fear and excitement, which is why people like roller coasters. I love roller well, coasters. I, do I, love that. I love roller coasters. But it's the exact same thrill of a roller coaster that you get when you're watching a horror film. It's oh, just no, a different... No, except that different. a horror film well, isn't going to knock your spine out of whack when you turn upside this, down. This is true. <laughs> and so, that's, that's I'll why... I'll take the amusement park. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't do either one. Except when they have the clowns. <laughs> yeah, uh, no clowns. Slaughterhouse, it sounds more like um, it's sort of self-feeding in a way, um, where you have not only the, the fright that goes in for the visitors, but... 
also the high EMF, one would think there's a lot of power to generate those mannequins, etc., right? Yes. Um, Mm -hmm. They are actually near Tucson Electric Power Plant, one of their plants. Yeah, so... So the um, EMFs in there are crazy in certain rooms. Other rooms are a little further in, so there are less EMF, you know, exposed. Yeah, less contamination. Yeah. But uh, it was a true slaughterhouse, though, too. So they used to slaughter animals in that building. So you get the mixture of all of that together, and it just it does fuel it. Sort of like Bobby Mackey's, in a way. Wasn't that a slaughterhouse, too? Bobby Mackey's? I thought that was a bar. It, it, it is. It, it is, is a bar, bar. but there was a slaughterhouse before that. Thing. Right. There yeah. used to be a, a slaughterhouse there. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but this this place is way better than what Bobby Mackey's was because this was a. Was it, it was Farmer John. Farmer John's. Back so, in the day. And so. then after Farmer John's, uh, John's, it was actual meat processing yeah. plant. And then it sat empty for a little while, and then Slaughterhouse went into it. Okay. So all of that, plus an EMF, plus the power plant, plus, wow. Yeah. It's kind of a trifecta there. <laughs> yeah. It, there, there's definitely no disappointment in activity there, that's for sure. Yeah, and then it, it sat vacant for about nine years, and the, the homeless actually were using it the whole time. So did, so, the, did the homeless ever... Come running out, hollering and screaming. I wouldn't know. Yeah, we wouldn't know because um, I know the guy that bought it when he first took over took it over. He was actually leasing it, and he would have to run them out weekly. Um, well, apparently they wasn't too afraid of whatever might be in there. I don't think they really care as long yeah. as they have shelter. <laughs> They probably just stayed out of the spooky area, so they're like, we're not going in that area. <laughs> All right. All right. I, I think what I, we're... I, like... I don't know. Why is there feedback? I'm not supposed to be having feedback. Yeah, it's a really different different kind of feedback, too. It's a new one. <sighs> hey, as long as it's positive feedback, you're in good shape. Positive. No, no, no. <laughs> wow. Can't believe I didn't pick up on that one myself. Impressive. Yeah. All right, I think what we're going to do, though, is we're going to go ahead and take a a quick break. Um, Very interesting uh, show, and I just want to remind you, if you do have questions, uh, private chat them Henry Foister or Ceiling Cat, because Jeff's not in the chat room, and we will get those answered for you. So, Jeff, why don't you take us out for a a quick little break? Yep. Yeah, well, you're listening to the Paranormal View on parahyphenx.com with your hosts Henry Foister, Ceiling Cat Barbara Duncan, and myself Jeffrey Gould. With tonight's guest Becky McKitty Gibson and William Gibson of Tucson Ghost Company. So stay tuned for more of the Paranormal View after the break. Paranormal Radio programming for the open mind. And welcome back, everybody, right here to the Paranormal View on the Parex Radio Network. I want to thank everybody for taking the time to be with us tonight a great show going on and um want to welcome back uh jeffrey gould hello hello and barbara duncan i'm still here and those listening from around the world and speaking of that barbara where do we have listeners at tonight Ask me that later. Oh, later. Answer fuzzy. <laughs> that crystal ball messing up, is it? <laughs> mm-hmm. Super, super eight ball. Um, you, by the way, I, I heard none of those commercials at all in my headset. Oh, you know why? Uh, you forgot to play them? No, I forgot to hit the switch, and Barbara didn't remind me. Oops. <laughs> Scroll up. Um, Tonight we have listeners in the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, Unknown, Israel, and Costa Rica. Ah. Everywhere. Pretty much. Now, when, when we have our second break, you will hear the commercials since now I hit the button. And since, uh, you didn't hear the commercials. That means I'm having to do all the recording, which I am. So uh, that's good for Barbara. Ha, I'm off. <laughs> I did remember to do that anyway. 
so I want to welcome back uh, Becky and Will Guideson. Thank you. Hello. Is, is that the way you spell it, Guideson? No, we actually spell it differently. That's just the way to pronounce it is Guideson. Oh, Guideson. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, everyone cannot pronounce our last name. Everyone says it the way you guys were earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing is that's what I would have asked if I'd been able to get on and talk to you before the show. I would have asked, that's my first name is Jeffrey with a G, like Jeffrey Rush and Giraffe. Uh, so I always make sure I'm pronouncing guests names correctly when I can. And uh, like I say, I only found your surnames, your surname early, like 30, 40 minutes ago. That's OK. I don't even try to attempt to say last names very often anymore on my radio show because I always like torture them really, really bad. I'm horrible with last names. I was surprised when I met Will that I was able to pronounce his last name right. That, that shocked me. That's only because she wanted it as hers. <laughs> oh. Mm. Wow. <laughs> How much money passed hands? <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, let's see. On your tours that you do, um, how many haunted locations, uh, On I guess, you have the walking tour and then you have the bus tour. Do you go to the same places on each one or are they different places? Oh, no, they're different. We don't want you taking one tour and then having the same experience. Ah. So, so the walk- uh, go ahead. The, the walking tour we do in downtown Tucson. And we hit probably about 12 locations. We take a break about halfway in the middle of it so people can rest and uh, get something to drink. And our rest stop is at a haunted location. Mm -hmm. Because that runs about two hours long. And then uh, the driving tour is three hours long. And we drive you all around. We actually kind of get out of the vehicle at roughly about six places. But we talk about more than that on the tour. So what are some of the uh, places that are haunted on your walking tour that you take people to? Well, the most haunted, the most famous haunted one that we stop at is Hotel Congress. And that's the location where uh, John John Dillinger's gang was staying the night it caught fire. Hmm. Which led to his arrest here in Tucson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we had the Pioneer, uh, the old courthouse. Um, we actually start off at uh, La Casina. Where we do our ghost experience. Now, do you usually just stand on the outside and tell the people about stuff, or you take them inside some of these places? On your walking tour? La Cucina, we have permission to go inside as long as the shops are open. Um, We do have a key to the shops, but we don't do that on our walking tour because of the fact that the walking tour is when the restaurants are open. So we don't want to try to keep, you know, people from the restaurant getting into the building when we're doing the walking tour. Uh, But as long as they're open, we have permission to go in all the shops in there. Uh, We have permission to go into Hotel Congress, so we go in there. Um, If some of these other places happen to be open, um, they usually will let us in, but those are the two that we're basically always in. Um, We've had, like, the Masonic Building let us in when our tour has gone through there. Um, We used to have a place called Access Tucson that would let us in, but they've closed down. Uh, so it just, it varies, but mostly it is outside talking about it. Mm-hmm. Now, that's really interesting because um, I know that uh, on a lot, well, there are a lot of different walking tours that you actually pick up hitchhikers going along there. Um, have people contacted you back and saying, hey, you got to see this photograph because I caught something? Yes. We actually have had... Uh, at the train station and at the Masonic building, I think is the most that we've had people yes, contact pictures. us back with pictures. At the train station, there always seems to be a face that will appear. And at the Masonic always seems to be a shadow. 
So oh, is it the same face? You know, it's hard to kind of make it out, but it, it's always the same location, and we have gone back to make sure it's not, you know, a matrixing or, or a mannequin head or the window being dirty, and it's not. Uh, it's just a face, and it always appears in the same area, but not the exact same spot. And uh, then the Masonic building, it, it usually is a shadow in the door. That's where they usually find that shadow. That's interesting. And, of course, nothing follows you home, right? Oh, all the time. But to the tour guests, no. But to <laughs> Will and I, yes. <laughs> You always have to, you, know, you can walk around with this, but you're not coming home. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think she minds when they come home. We have haunted objects in our home, so. Ah, okay. Yeah. On our, purpose, our kids get a kick out of it because they try to blame the ghost for things that they do. <laughs> oh, so it's like family circus and not me and all that? No. <laughs> yeah. So, so you have those haunted objects on purpose? Yes. Okay. Some of them we removed from clients. Um, some of them I purchased, and some of them I was just drawn to. Hmm. So, and you don't try to contain them in any fashion. No. Okay. So, I mean, if if they're if they're negatively impacting the house, they get cleansed. They get cleansed or removed. Okay. So, have you had anything happen at these haunted locations on your tour when you're talking about them? Yeah. Yes, I've been touched and pinched. Um, and you had the door. Oh, and I had the door jiggle on me. Uh, it, it's funny because a lot of this happens at La Cocina where, you know, as we, we do that ghost experience. So, like I said, they know me so well. And sometimes it's like they'll hear me talking about them and they're like, oh, okay, we're going to go over and, you know, bug her for a second because she's talking about us. Or, you know, she forgot about us, so I'm going to go remind her or something. <laughs> because there is a spirit there that will pinch uh, women on the butt. And um, I've been pinched on the butt there when I was talking about it. And then I've been tapped on the shoulder um, as if they're saying, hey, don't forget about me. And then when I was standing outside one night and they heard me talking, you could hear the door jiggle, uh, the door handle, like, jiggle as if they were trying to come out. Um, so, yeah, I, I've had things happen to me on the walking tour. I got accused of one of them and I wasn't anywhere near her. Yeah. I thought he pinched me. And he <laughs> didn't pinch me. Uh, actually, that that's happened twice to where I thought Will had pinched me on the butt and he was nowhere near me when that had happened. So, One of our former uh, get, uh, co-hosts was at a uh, haunted location and um, she was walking along and people were behind her and she suddenly felt herself being poked and the people behind her could actually see her jacket being depressed where the poking was happening. Yeah, that's awesome when things like that happen. I don't think anyone's actually, well, the only time someone really witnessed one of my experiences was at the Birdcage Theater, actually, where I had a zipper that was raised, and somebody, my co-lead investigator, Maela, she actually saw that zipper being raised, so that was pretty cool, and I think we've caught things here and there on DVR cameras when we've done investigations. Yeah, like my jacket getting picked up. Yeah, Will's had his jacket get picked up, and... We caught shadows behind me before and things like that. Oh, that's now, bird cool. cage, the bird cage is the one in uh, Tombstone, right? Yes. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, in Tombstone, Arizona. We we had to pay to investigate there, but we went there a few years back and did our little fun trip because the paranormal group that we have, we sometimes will pay to like go on a trip like this coming june we're going to el paso texas and we're staying at an old historical hotel and getting together with the paranormal uh ghost tours there and we're going to investigate with them in el paso so we do that every once in a while where we'll just kind of travel 
and do some investigations. Last year we were up in Eureka, but only uh, myself and my co-lead got to go to that one, unfortunately. But we'll probably go to Eureka next year and do that. And So we like to travel and we like to investigate, you know, these haunted locations and see what we can find for ourselves. It's always fun to go to those places, but some of these big name places anymore, they charge such outrageous amounts and they have so many people going in at one time that it's just impossible to actually get uh, good quality uh, stuff to happen that you can actually capture. Yeah, we found if you go during like a lot of these places off seasons is the best time to do it. Um. Like, we went to uh, the St. James Hotel in New Mexico. It was just Becky and myself. And the entire hotel. That was so awesome. <laughs> yeah, we we went. It's their off-season. It's winter. Nobody's wanting to be there. And I was like, sounds like it's the perfect time to go. And when uh, I reserved the room, they told us, you know, right now you're the only people that are booked in the hotel. Wow. So and, yeah. Uh, we wander. ended up being the only two people in, besides the person at the front desk, but yeah. the only two people in the entire hotel. So we had free roam of the entire hotel. Yeah, they opened up the whole, the, every room they opened it up for said, you more than welcome to investigate anywhere you want. That was the most awesome time ever, I think. <laughs> so did you catch anything? Not a whole lot, sadly. Will had more experiences than I did there, which I got so jealous over there. I had a dream that I'm not sure if it was paranormal because you know how spirits can interact with your dreams. So I'm not really sure if it was just, you know, an overactive imagination or if it was the spirit interacting, but I just basically had a dream and heard some odd noises here and there, but Will's the one that had the interaction there. Yeah, in fact, it started as soon as we checked in. Uh, I went up to the room to put our baggage in there. I opened up the door, walked in, set the luggage down, and the door slammed shut behind me. Wow. So so I was like, all right, it Sweet. can happen. So I went back, opened up the door, looked at it for a minute, didn't move. Went to go finish putting the luggage away. It slammed shut again as soon as I turned my back. <laughs> and that's one of the claims to this room. So I was like, you got to be kidding me. There's no way. So I walked back, opened up the door again, and just stared at it. Never moved. It's like, <laughs> you got to be kidding. I'd have, I'd have slowly backed up and see if it actually closed then. Oh, yeah, I, I did all that. I walked around in the room, just kept my eye on the door the whole time. It never moved. Yeah, that's um, the investigators in us. We try to debunk, and we try to see if we caused it first, but... Because I'm the biggest skeptic out there when it comes to our team. I mean, I'll sit there and go, no, it's not. It's this or that one. I I couldn't do, I couldn't recreate it. But as soon as I turned my back those first two times, that door was slammed shut right behind me. Hmm. Wow. Um, later on that night, we went out to do some investigating. And uh, I walked back to where the, the poker room was and the chandelier was swinging on its own. No, no breeze, no air conditioning. I don't even, yeah, there was a window in there, but it was actually closed. Mm-hmm. So, couldn't figure out what was making that. And there's things we did debunk, like, you know, people would say they hear running water. Well, some of the toilets would actually continuously run. Oh, wow. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then some people would take pictures and, you know, claim it was or observe different uh, things yeah. and we were able to debunk with the lights and stuff like that yeah some of the pictures. <laughs> they, they have these chandeliers that uh kind of run down the hallway so people that would stay there would take pictures down the hallway well then they have these little orbs in their pictures <laughs> and when i was looking at their photo album i'm like you know that looks a little suspicious so I went and took those same kind of pictures and got the same results. It was all and reflective. it was all light reflecting off the chandelier crystals. Light flare, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep. The I biggest watching... demon of them all. And <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was watching one of your videos, and um, I I forget which building it was in, 
Um, but there were a lot of, you know, dust particles flying around. And yes. at one point, it's like a door opened and then closed. I'm like, but does that mean somebody opened it or did it open by itself? Was the camera left by itself? There was no context or narration. I'm trying to remember what video that was. If it's on YouTube and it came from our DVR system, it was probably because it did it by itself. Um, okay. When we first started the YouTube videos, um, we had no clue how to get the YouTube videos up there or how to... <laughs> Actually make a video yeah. for that fact. <laughs> so our earlier videos don't have descriptions or anything. They're just showing what we caught because we didn't know how to edit or anything. <laughs> oh, nice. nice. Um, but in the more recent videos that are up there, you know, our friend Dave, who's the co-host of Mysteries Explain, he does, you know, all the editing and putting in things. And he knows how to do that because he's a professional photographer and cameraman. Okay. So uh, they, they've definitely gotten better now in our videos. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, when the door the opened, door it, opened it, it just let this light stream in. And, and then it closed. I'm like, uh, okay, was that something supernatural? Or somebody was like, oh, sorry, you're filming. <laughs> No, if it's up on YouTube, that means it was, you know, paranormal. Um, like I said, the earlier videos, we didn't really know how to do anything. We just wanted to get started on YouTube, and it was just Will and I, basically. And we are like, how do we do this? What do we do? <laughs> yeah, I downloaded software for video editing and all this stuff, and I just looked at it and go, you know what? We're yeah. not the most tech savvy when it comes I to things like that. I can tear your car apart and put it back together and make it run just as good, if not better, but don't ask me to make a video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, um, we've got uh, some shows up on YouTube. My only problem is to convert it from the podcast over to, you have to, you have to make it into a, a movie type thing in order to load it onto YouTube. And it just takes forever to convert the podcast. And, well, you uh, do it and then go to bed, and then you got it in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, as long as your computer doesn't decide to upload new software or whatnot. Right. And, well, you're doing it, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Wake up in the morning, it's only halfway done. You're like, oh, really? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why we only have a few of ours up on there. I mean... I, I've been slow and so much to do and everything. I just haven't had time to actually start converting those things. So yeah, well, we're thankful for Dave because I mean he does he does awesome stuff with videos and pictures. And, and he's starting to put up EVPs now because he got the little background thing that goes in there. So if it wasn't for Dave, half of our EVP stuff and videos wouldn't be up there. We did the Whaley House. We put some short, very short video up of the Whaley house from the lights mm. flickering. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Dave's our tech person that does all that. And uh, he's the one that put together our slaughterhouse video that's up on YouTube and all the latest ones. In fact, he was the one that learned how to share videos from when we were on the news because we didn't even know how to share them on YouTube from when we've been featured on news programs and stuff and uh, documentaries and things. And Dave's the one that, figured out how to do all that because we were like help <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah which there's a funny story behind him because he actually did not um come searching to be on a paranormal team no he didn't um he was actually uh going along to film uh film us while we were doing an investigation for a uh local tv show and uh while doing that at the end of the night i walked up to him and said because he, he he seemed really interested in the stuff so i walked up to him and said how would you feel about joining a paranormal team and he was like a little girl <laughs> well he wasn't wearing a dress that time though but no, he wasn't wearing a dress that time but i mean he was like a little girl that was given her first puppy <laughs> i mean there was no hesitation he's all yeah <laughs> I thought you guys would never ask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Dave, and uh, he's been on the team for well over a year now. He's 
No, more than that, because he's, he's been been, gone for almost a year now. He's been on the team for almost three years. Yeah, and uh, he's in Maryland right now, but he's coming back to Tucson in June. And uh, he's also kind of got thrown into the radio show of Mysteries Explained along with uh, myself. Mm-hmm. Because we, I was approached first saying, hey, you want to be a co-host on a radio show? And I was like, um, sure, okay, why not? And I did the radio show with this guy named Gypsy. I think, no, it was about three times that I did this show with him. And then all of a sudden he's all here. The show's yours. And I'm like, okay, what do I do? (laughs) And I invited Dave to come, you know, help me one day. And Dave and I just hit it off so well on air together that he just became the co-host. And we've been doing Mysteries Explained for almost, what, two years now? Yeah. Yeah. Years. So, yeah, Dave kind of got thrown into this, too, and he got really, really involved in it. So, well, I think it's great that you have a, somebody who's really into photography and, and film uh, simply because um, there's so much out there that is lens flare and uh, dust, of course, um, right. that it's great to have somebody who can debunk that almost immediately or be able to film it, photograph it without having it show up. Yeah. Yeah, he's really good. I mean, he's a professional photographer, so he's got all that equipment, and yeah, he's really good at all that. So we were very lucky to meet Dave and bring him on. Uh, and, and some of our other team members are really wonderful, too. We have another um, co-lead named Mela, and she's been with us since day one. And uh, she's a very hard worker, and when Will and I decided to kind of step back for a little bit on all the residential cases, she has pretty much taken over on on all of that and kind of overwhelmed herself a little bit, but hasn't complained once. (laughs) She's been doing an awesome job at it, so no complaints. We appreciate everything she's been doing and does. Yeah, secretly she's probably going, oh my God, not another one. But But we have a pretty awesome team in general. Um, Mela's been with us the longest, and I think Dave's probably been the second longest. Yeah. So, and they're our team leads. So whenever Will and I step back for anything, Dave and Mela take charge and do what needs to be done. So... That's pretty awesome. And we just accepted two new members, in fact, today. Mm-hmm. So constantly just trying to expand and get out there. And Will and I have to kind of take a back seat now since the company is where it needs to be and the team is basically where we need it to be because I am writing a book. And so a lot of research and time is being dedicated to this book. <laughs> Yeah, because people don't realize how much work really goes into running a paranormal team. Running a company. Running a company. (laughs) A radio show. A radio show, working a full-time job. (laughs) Having four kids. Yeah, then the honeydew list of what needs to be done around the house. (laughs) And then add a book on top of it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I'd say you're kind of busy. Yeah. But we like it. It keeps us on our toes, so to say. Okay. Sometimes uh, I don't think oh, we yeah. want to be there, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we talked a little bit about photography. Um, I assume that you gather EVPs. Um, now, here's a question because I know you're in an, an area where there's bound to be Spanish. There's bound to be Native American language as well as English, as well as French, probably. Um, what's your rate of getting EVPs, and do you find that they tend to be multilingual as well? Um, some of them... We have gotten some things back in a different language, and we yeah. looked up what it said, and we had gotten, I think it was French, wasn't it? Or was it German? We've gotten German. Um, we've gotten Spanish. Um, we don't have anybody on the team that speaks Native American, we do have someone that speaks Spanish, though. Yeah. Well, we have a couple that speak Spanish. Yeah, we Spanish. have a couple that speak Spanish. So when we do get the Spanish ones, we can we translate can that a lot easier. Um, 
the German ones. You knew a little uh, bit of German. I, I know a little bit of German, but when it gets into doing full translations, I even have to look that up. Um, but yeah, because we have the the train station here that was basically the go to for the West. Um, if you wanted to go to Tombstone or you wanted to go out to San Francisco, you went through Tucson and hit the train station here. So, so that was a, that was a major hub. Yeah. yeah. Even though Tucson wasn't big and there wasn't nothing happening back in that day, Tucson was the major hub to get to wherever you were going. Which is one of the reasons Hotel Congress ended up getting built was because of the fact that Mm -hmm. that train station was where people were getting off, taking breaks, whatever, and Hotel Congress was there to serve the people getting off of the train. Mm -hmm. So that was a major little area back in the day. In fact, uh, if Everyone pretty much knows the story of Wyatt Earp. Uh, he was in Tucson to send off his family to California after Tombstone, you know. The whole the, run in with the Cowboys. The OK Corral happened. You know, they came to Tucson, and the one fight actually happened at the train station in Tucson. Oh, that's where he killed one of the guys at? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, uh, Frank Stillwell. Yeah, so that that whole scene from the movie Tombstone where he goes, you tell him, "Hell, I'm coming, and hell's coming with me." That that was here that, in Tucson. that was happened here in Tucson. Ah. So have you investigated uh, there? What's that? Have you investigated there? Yes. Yes, we have. Um, they were kind enough to let us in and investigate their building, the tunnel underneath. Um. So yeah, and it was pretty interesting. Wow. And Wyatt Earp is buried up here in the Jewish cemetery in Colma. Yeah, we've heard that. Mm-hmm. We need to go visit that when we're in San Francisco this summer. Huh. Oh, the graves? Oh, yeah. Colma, <laughs> well, yeah. City oh. of the dead, and it really is. Are you just going to San Francisco or anywhere else in California? No, hey. we're doing San Diego. We're going to stop at San Diego first, and we're going to head up to San Francisco and then on the way back, we're going to stop in Los Angeles for about well, a day. Definitely let me know because that's where I am. I'm in Hollywood. Yeah, that's where we're going. We're actually staying at um, Roosevelt? Hollywood Guest Inn on Sunset Boulevard. So, uh, which, which which hotel? Which Hollywood Guest Inn. It's supposed to be on Sunset Boulevard. I have no clue. I just booked whatever looked all right and decent. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there are a bunch of these little. (laughs) Yeah, there are a bunch of these little kind of uh, sun, uh, little not not motels, but might as well be. Mm -hmm. Um, Just trying to see which one. They 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 didn't have listed on there. Make sure you bring your gun, did they? You know, I think isn't all of Hollywood like that though. You know, I I don't know. Like I said, I've been there once, and I remember staying in a hotel where they actually had in your room saying, some places in Hollywood are not safe to walk in after nightfall. And I'm like going, wow. Well, I I grew (laughs) up in New York, so I've I've never had a problem since I moved out here before the little turn of the century. So uh, I have no idea what areas to which they refer. (laughs) Well, hopefully it has improved since I've been out there because it, it's it been years since I've been to Hollywood. We usually, the furthest we usually go in California is San Diego or Anaheim. That's usually where we stop. Uh, of course, Disneyland. Because like I said, we have four daughters and uh-huh. they range from age six to 18. So Disneyland's one of those places where we can all enjoy and have fun. And that's usually about where we stop. And you got Knott's Berry Farm, which is slightly more affordable and also very cool because it, it's got more of a Wild West theme and uh, yeah, very family friendly. Yeah, the only problem with Knott's Berry Farm, and it's owned by Cedar Fair. I, mm. I know these things because I was raised at Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio, uh, <laughs> from Toledo. But um, we went to Knott's, but the only problem is is our youngest isn't tall enough for all the rides. Don't. Oh. And so that makes it difficult because we can't yeah. spend everything together like you can at Disneyland. Yeah. So, so at least 
at least Disneyland, you've got Small World and stuff like that. And... Right, yeah, you know, and uh, I'm a huge Disney person anyway, besides the paranormal. My next passion is Disney. I love Disney. So anytime I can do anything Disney, I'm doing that. I know. I, I, I have a friend who actually works there, and like every few months, he has a, okay, it's a Disney day. And he like <laughs> has a bunch of his friends, and I wasn't available the last time. Um, and I'm like, you know, gotta remind me, you know, next time because I, you know, it's been so long since I could afford to go there. Yeah, it is uh, expensive, but I love Disney. That's so your your location. I know exactly the the hotel at which you're. You know, like I say, it's more of a motel uh, at Sunset, it's right by Highland, which means you're in walking distance of um, where they do the Oscars, the Chinese Theater. Right. Um, the now, Madame Tussauds. There are two wax museums. You have Madame Tussauds, and you have the Hollywood Wax Museum. The Hollywood Wax Museum was here first. Uh, I, I went there only once before I found out it was haunted. I'm constantly finding places that I find out later are haunted. I don't know what the deal is with that. <laughs> but my friend Marla Brooks, who uh, has written three books on different all the hauntings in Los Angeles, uh, except for a few that I've come across uh and um she says that the new madame tussauds has ghosts and she and i were talking about that on the air one time because before it was the tucson it was it was the parking lot next to the chinese theater and i'm oh. like how can it have ghosts if it was a parking lot and we and we the theory we had to come up with was that ghosts are kind of attracted to the fact they're not just Sears mannequins, they, they're they very realistic mannequins. Right. Unlike the Hollywood Max Museum, where they might as well be Sears mannequins with, you know, the costumes put on. Uh, some really <laughs> bad figures. But I'm told that the that that's very haunted. But again, like I say, I didn't know that at the time. Um, there's the Vogue Theater on uh, Hollywood Boulevard, which is now actually is, ba- is open again. They have concerts uh, with bands, and that's supposedly very haunted. And they used to have ghost tours in there all the time, but I lived up in the valley, and there was no way for me to come down and not be stranded if I took a late-night ghost tour. So by the time I moved on the other side of the valley, and I'm now in Hollywood, it's like, oh, we're not doing that anymore because it's being bought. I'm like, what? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, downtown L.A., uh, obviously you won't be here in October where they have ghost tours, and they actually take you to haunted places. Um I've had there's a theater in um, on, on Broadway downtown L.A. that I've had ghost experiences that I did not expect because I was working on a commercial because I'm an actor. And I had ghost experience in there, which was uh, ver- uh, validated by the secretary of the historical society, because all I did was uh, I, I uh, when I found out that she was the secretary of the historical society was there. All I did was I said, you know, uh, I, I asked her if there was possibility of some hauntings and she said, yes, you know, people don't go in the cellar after dark. And, uh, and all I said was, is there anything with that main bathroom? Cause that's where I'd had my experience. So she, her reply was, Oh yeah, you'll hear, you know, you know voices and toilets will flush themselves. And I said, you can talk someone else up to having experienced that. Cause I had had, a voice in the the empty stall next to me, and it flushed, and they were all manual flushes, no automatics. Oh wow! Nice. Oh, That's wow. cool. Well, I think uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take our last break. Uh, won't be real long, so uh, I'll let uh, Jeff take us out. Okay, fine. You're listening to The Paranormal View on com with your hosts, Henry Foister, Ceiling Cap, Barbara Duncan, and myself, Jeffrey Gould, and tonight's guest, uh, Becky mckidden Guideson and William Guideson of Tucson Ghost Company. So stay tuned for more of The Paranormal View after the break. Whether you're listening at home, at work, or anywhere, thanks for making Para-X part of your day. Your source for everything paranormal, para X. And welcome back, everybody, right here to the Paranormal View on the Parax Radio Network. I want to thank everybody for being with us tonight. Those here in the chat room, those listening from around the world, we appreciate each and every one of you. 
Um, if you do have questions, I'll remind you again, you can private chat them to Henry Foister or Ceiling Cat, and we will get those questions answered for you. So I want to welcome back uh, Jeff. Hello, hello. And Barbara. Yeah, I'm still here. And our special guests, Becky and Will. Hello. hello. All right. So I'm, I'm glad you guys uh, decided to spend a couple hours with us tonight. Oh, not a problem. Uh, that's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know uh, the different places that uh, on your tour that's haunted. What are some of the locations and the history behind it which uh, has made them haunted? Uh, well, let's see. There's history behind a lot of them, which... I truly believe the history and the hauntings go hand in hand. Uh, one in particular is a building out here that used to be a hotel, and it burnt down, and it killed 23 people in total when it burnt down. And they still don't know who or what caused that fire. So all these people died, and their deaths have never been justified. So, in my opinion, that's one of the reasons why that one building is so particularly haunted. Did they, re- uh, did they rebuild that building? Yes, it is now an office building. Uh, but they are doing some remodeling to it, from my understanding. Uh, we are trying, actually, in the process now to get a hold of the owners to see if we have permission to write about them in our book. Um, They basically, in the past, did not like to admit they were haunted, but everyone here in Tucson knows that this building is haunted. Uh, But, yeah, they're really picky about stories and things like that. Oh, so you're saying that they never caught the arsonists or or discovered how the... Wow. All they know is the fire was started on two separate floors, and... um, the person that they did arrest for, for doing it got acquitted. Was acquitted a few years ago. But he spent like what twenty some years yeah, in he, jail for it. Yeah, oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. And he he turned around and sued the city for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I would too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that you know has a lot of history there. It's those hauntings, um, La Cucina. You know, like I said, where our tour starts and our uh, ghost experiences. There's a lot of history there because parts of the building were built in the 1800s. It was originally part of the Presidio Wall, which was one of the first forts that civilians lived in here in Tucson. It was used during World War II as um, a place for the wives to go when their husbands or sons or whatever got, you know, shipped off to war. So lots of history there. Uh the old Santa Rita Hotel. The old Santa Rita Hotel, which is no longer up, though. Yeah. That was one of the most popular hotels in downtown Tucson that had, like, a drowning of a little boy there. Um, guy killing his wife. Yeah, a guy killing himself. his wife and then himself mm-hmm. in the hotel. Uh, you know, the history and the hauntings, I believe, pretty much go hand in hand. Uh, some of the historical buildings are not what they were back in the day anymore. And then you, you do have some of the buildings that are more recent, but they still have those hauntings. Access Tucson was one of those. Um, it was a VFW post at one point in time. And they would have the sounds of, like, the veterans still, like, having their gatherings and parties there. Hmm. And wow. that was more of a recent thing. So the, but, uh, the yeah. hotel that burned down, uh, you said it's no longer there. Uh, have they built anything on the yeah, uh, space? It's actually uh, an office building now. With the same name. With the same name, but um, the, the, all the uh, haunts that haunted the hotel are still the same haunts that haunt it now. Uh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, the location hasn't changed. It's like, well, it's still here. You know. Yeah. <laughs> not like we got burned or anything and it goes back to what people have said before you know where ghosts can appear to be floating over a floor or go through a wall it's because they're still haunting the old location not the new yeah. one. 
Right. Correct. And nothing's changed for them. It's still the same. Right. Because that's the way that they see it as the way that they remembered it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to ask you, um, because you say that you're the resident skeptic of the group, uh, what, if anything, has changed your mind? Was there a specific incident, or has it been just uh, a series of events that you've discovered that this probably is quite uh, quite true? Uh, I'm harder to convince that something is paranormal. I'm always going to try and say, no, this is the cause of that or this. And then if it's something that I cannot, then it's unexplained or it possibly is paranormal. Um, there's things that have happened to me in my life that I can't explain. <laughs> um, I was thinking of people getting married. Five years. Yeah. Um, cause, cause I'm famous for bringing things home with me. Yeah. And then he has to experience it. <laughs> yeah. I put um, on a straight ghost, honey. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you'll never see me walk into some place and go, oh, yeah, it's haunted. This is paranormal. And this is, yeah, something actually has to happen for me to say I can't prove otherwise. So you've never had your hackles go up as you've entered a place or anything like that? He has lately. I think he's becoming more sensitive to it the more mm. we're doing this. I seem to be becoming less sensitive. He seems to be becoming more sensitive. It's really weird. No, it's like a vampire. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think so. Something. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, I was always the one that would get followed home, though. And he would experience things in our house after I would be followed home with seeing shadows and being scratched. Oh well, yeah, I'll sit there and go, "Oh, this just happened." She'd be like, "What?" All right, it's no big deal. <laughs> well, I think we we both got into that point where we're like, yeah. "Oh, okay, we got a ghost again." <laughs> well, I'm I'm very similar to that. When I'm at a, a at an investigation or something, for some reason, it's like like you say, some of these ghost haunting shows, where I don't know if they're actually, you know girly men or they're just doing it for drama they they act really terrified if the slightest sound happens and when i'm on an investigation if a sudden sound happens i turn around i start walking towards it like i wonder what made that sound i will go look and right. people are like how can you walk in that direction that's where the sound was i'm like well where else am i going to walk right you know, I'm not gonna walk away <laughs> from it yeah, how are you going to find out what it is if you're going the opposite direction? Exactly, you know, and we, we joked that if, you know, something startling happens on an investigation and Henry's there, don't be between him and the door. Because um, he says he's scared. Yeah, pretty he, much. He's, yeah. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm more curious. To, I was at a Masonic Lodge near Pasadena with a group. And we had just left the the main entrance. Sort of, as you go into the building, there's a little bar and uh, a couple of billiard tables. And then you go into the main auditorium area. And we had been in the, the bar area and the billiard area, and nothing seemed to be happening. So we, we all walked into the auditorium. After about a minute, as we were about to, like, well, let's go downstairs, all of a sudden... Oh, there was this weird sound from behind us, and I just turned. We all turned around. They like, oh, you all heard that? I'm like, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I heard it. And I just started walking, and they just couldn't understand. You know, they were all standing in terror that something had happened. I'm like, it's like the old joke. You know, ghost isn't going to kill you because then you'll be a ghost, and it gets really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think the whole. Uh... Big tough guy running out of the building thing is kind of funny because uh, Becky and I went and uh, stayed at the Grand Jerome Hotel. Oh, oh yeah. And uh, we went down. They had a investigation where you can go down to the original hospital and investigate all three floors of it. So we're up on the third floor, and we go into what used to be the old bathroom where they had the showers and the bathroom stalls and all that. And... You couldn't, just pitch black, you couldn't really see anything, and for some reason, I'm like, you know, if 
something's in here. I don't know what, but something's in here. And she's all, nah, there's nothing in here. I don't feel anything. I was like, okay, whatever. So we walk out and we go into another room and this big dude looked like he's a bodybuilder went right in there after we left. Not two seconds later, he goes running out of there screaming like a girl. I just got touched. Oh my God. <laughs> Ran down all three floors and right out the building. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> well, back back in New Jersey, where I was, we had a, an air. Oh man, I have to move my headset because this echo is driving me crazy. Um, I we we had a place uh, called Ringwood Manor, which is one of those places that I guess I think Washington may have stayed at at one point or whatever. And it is now a museum. And some friends of mine went, uh, brother and sister, and he went up to the second floor and he got this massive oppressive feeling. And I uh, was, oh, that's just weird. And he went downstairs to his sister and said, go upstairs and uh, tell me what you think of uh, what's up there. And that's all he said. And she went upstairs and came back down saying, oh, something really doesn't want anybody up there, does it? Yeah, that was the feeling I got in that building. Yeah. Only on the third floor, though. And I told Will, I was like, we have to leave. And he's like looking at me and I'm like, because a lot of these people on that, ghost hunt weren't taking it seriously and they were some of them were drunk they some of them were drunk they were being disrespectful they were like going ha ha the ghost is going to get me or whatever and they were being very disrespectful and it angered whoever was there and i was feeling the blunt of it so to say and i told will i'm like we gotta leave because this person's not liking this crowd and it's <laughs> angry and it just yeah we gotta leave <laughs> <laughs> it was it was one of the very few times that i felt uncomfortable in a situation to where i was like we gotta remove ourselves and that mm. doesn't happen very often at all but it happened at that place because it, People weren't taking it seriously, and they were being rude. That's probably one of the, the pitfalls of uh, investigating public areas, yeah. uh, especially when there's a lot of different ghost hunting groups in there and just a lot of um, unprofessionals uh, who just do nothing but anger and provoke. <laughs> oh, yeah, which is never a smart idea. Yeah. <laughs> Like I said, well, they, I, they get the people that pull out a K2 meter and they're going, oh, not these guys again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would love to have gone into uh, Jerome Hotel because I was out there, uh, not in, involuntary is the wrong word, but uh, this, the same girlfriend who lived in Arizona, while we were out there, uh, the car developed major uh, wheel trouble uh, the the spline had gotten loose and it was to the point that if we had driven back and gone over like 70 miles an hour the wheel probably would have jettisoned off uh, so it was being repaired but the people who worked at the repair place were really nice and they took us in they were uh, essentially a pair of angels as it were for us and they drove us all around we were stuck in in cottonwood for which is a cute little town but you don't want to be stuck in there for seven days like we were. Uh, but they took us up to Jerome. And I didn't know the place was haunted or anything like that. But I thought, this is really cool. I love Arizona. It's just this beautiful state. Kind of underrated. It is. And depending on where you're at, depends on what it looks like. Oh, yeah. Sedona is fantastic. I, oh, I spent a weekend up there. Hmm. I mean, you can go anywhere from flat out desert to trees, depending on where you're at. Yeah. And I love the I love the sign saying "Do not pick up hitchhikers that are right by the persons." Oh yeah, because we got lots of those out here. <laughs> the old saying is "Come on vacation, leave on parole." <laughs> Come on vacation, leave on parole. <laughs> I so wanted to get a photo of me under one of the signs with my thumb out. I just. <laughs> so, uh, what kind of uh, equipment? Uh, do you guys use and what's i guess you know like the stuff that you like to use the most well for our ghost experience we hand out k2s and ghost meters uh but for our actual investigations that we do with residents and businesses we use dvr cameras we have melimeter we have a thermal we have 
uh, REM pod. We have a spirit box. We have what else? <laughs> We have a huge uh, list. No uh, well, yeah, I noticed on your site you use a connect. Yes, yes. We, that's yeah. one of our newest things. We How have not caught anything you? on that yet. I'm so disappointed. That's not true. We actually caught a shadow on it. Oh, we didn't that's actually, right. We didn't catch a stick figure, but, but we, we, did, caught a we caught a shadow. That's right. It wasn't yeah. a stick figure, but it was a shadow. It looked like someone walking downstairs. Really? That was on the ceiling, which was really weird. Now, is that that one... That uh, when there's a spirit around, it shows it as a stick figure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And some of it, we've actually been able to debunk how some of that works. Yeah, because um, if you move too fast out of screen, your stick figure will stay. Hmm. Yeah, we we debunk that, unfortunately and sadly. I got so uh, excited. So <laughs> the human, the living, actually show up as a stick figure too. Yes. yes. Uh, so. Uh, yeah. So you're a stick figure. And if you, like, quickly move out of frame for whatever reason. And come back in, there will be two stick figures because it will still be registering what you you were once there. Gotcha. (laughs) And then it will pick you back up when you come back in. Or sometimes I'll reunite you with your stick figure. But yeah. And then you look like you got some weird thing trying to hump you. <laughs> so so you're trying to say then that this may not be uh, one of the most reliable pieces of equipment? Yeah, if, you're, if you haven't played around with it and tried to mess with it, it wouldn't be very reliable. If um, you manage to be able to keep everybody in the frame and not moving too fast and something were to show up, I would say more than likely that would be real. But if you got people coming and going across the screen, yeah, it, you're gonna... it, it tends to to trick it into thinking something's still there when they disappear. Yeah. And we found that out by accident uh, because we were at actually Hotel Congress one of our first times using it. And our friend Dave, um, he was in the camera view... And we heard a noise, so he quickly moved from the camera to go check out the noise. And it still registered him being there, so his stick figure was still there. And we were like, oh, we got a stick figure right where you were standing. And we were like, oh, that's cool. And we are like, let's try to recreate this. And when we recreated it, it happened again and again. So we were like, ah, that's not a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> So what about if you just left the connect on and nobody enters the frame? That would work because then it's not registering anything. So if you do get the stick figure, then it would be paranormal. Well, that's what I mean. I mean, have you tried just leaving it out somewhere overnight? We we have tried that. Um, We haven't caught anything on it yet. Um, Like Will said, we did catch a shadow, which is funny because it's supposed to be the stick figure, but we caught a shadow instead. Hmm. Yeah, that's another thing that we've also figured about about the Connect is. Oh, and they'll get orbs like your DVR cameras, but these orbs will be pitch black. Yeah. Huh. So the dots are weird. weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, sometimes it's a little hard for the Connect to actually pick up your stick figure if it can't quite register you. Hmm. Um, wow. Yeah. So when you first get it, somebody first gets in the screen, you got to make sure that it actually picks them up enough to where it'll actually outline their stick figure. Um, yeah, it, it's one of those things that you have to be very careful with yeah. so you're not producing your own yeah. paranormal activity, so to say. Okay. So, so in the hands of somebody that's not played with one or used one, it can be pretty deceiving. Yeah. yeah. And they could put out a lot of false evidence if they didn't know what they were doing. So um, what is your favorite piece to use? Probably the, just a recorder. Tends to give you the most reliable reliable right. evidence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's where we get a lot of our evidence is through EVPs. So that's I, that's what I do too. Um, yeah. Although video is nice because then you can actually show something, but that is. We've th- only caught things on video like, a couple times. Yeah, that is the hardest thing. To do I, is catch something on video. I think they're video, really good at showing up just as the camera is, is leaving the frame. Right. Yeah. It, it's like on the other side of the camera where the camera's not facing, or 
when they're not recording yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least you're at least you're trying to film outwards because what drives me crazy with these ghost shows is they'll have the things facing their faces and their reactions to stuff. I'm like, why can't I see what you're reacting to? Right. Oh, yeah. my favorite is they'll go, oh, did you see that? And they'll take off in the other direction to chase it. It's like, oh, wait, wait a minute. What the? <laughs> yeah, I, I, the the camera part is, to me, is very not reliable. Uh, I've never actually, all the video that's ever been shot, very few stuff has ever been. To me, it's it's a lot of money spent for not what you're getting back in return, you might say. Yeah, you're it is. you're aware in Long Beach that the Queen Mary ship is very very haunted, right? Yes, we've, we've stayed there. Yeah, we've stayed I've, there. I've stayed there, and um, one they there was a paranormal event there for a weekend, and one of the groups had had a camera that was just sort of it was on, but they weren't really trying to shoot anything. They were just walking from one place to another, and they had to go back frame by frame from the uh, dressing rooms where I got a really good EVP. Um, but when they were walking along, they passed by, and there's a, like two frames of a little girl just standing watching them as they're walking by. And if you didn't do it frame by frame, you wouldn't have seen her. All right. We've had that. Uh, we did yeah. that at Fox Theater, where you have to slow it down to actually see the figure. And again, we didn't know how to do that back at the time because we weren't <laughs> tech savvy. Yeah. So how long but. ago was that event that you were at the Queen Mary? Uh, it was, oh, let me see. Uh, let me find out here. I can that was probably, before you started on the show. It was around, it was probably around, it would have to be like 2011, 2013 or 12, something like that. Because I have the EVP I got, I posted it on YouTube, and I'll I'll put it, I'll I'll tweet it to you. Um, but yeah, because um, we were at an event there last year. Yeah, last February. Last February, and um, I don't know about that. It's funny because we didn't know the event was going we, on we when we booked yeah. it. Yeah, we didn't know the oh, event. Wow. It was Nick Groff's tour, and we didn't know it was going to be there when we were there. But uh, we were out at about two o'clock in the morning, and the, the the crew, the the people working there are are awesome. They're completely nice to us. They saw us walking around two o'clock in the morning. They, oh, you want to go check out this place and this place? And we'll, let, let's we'll take you all over the boat. So we're like, cool, yeah. So they took us to uh, I think it's Chuck's room or whatever it is, the one that they don't run out. Well, they're starting to run it out well, now. Yeah, they're, they're starting to. But uh, when we got there, you can hear voices in the room. And the guy's all, this door's supposed to be locked. Nobody should be in there. So he opens up the door, and he's all, who's in there? And there's three people. Yeah, from the freaking from, event. From the event. Huh. And, he's, and he starts going, well, how'd you get in here? And they're all, well, the door was open. And he's all, no, this door was locked. How'd you get in here? And all, the door was open. We got locked in here. So we don't know whether they broke in, broke or, what? in or whatnot, but uh, they ended up kicking them out, and they let us stay in there for about 15, <laughs> 20 minutes, do EVPs. <laughs> so, uh. it, it, it was an interesting experience that night because we actually walked around that whole ship at 2 o'clock in the morning, got to investigate places that they didn't usually let people into. And then I think the coolest part is going up on deck and walking around that boat at night because it just has an eerie feeling to it. That's where oh, I yeah. saw the impression, too. It was up on the deck. Yeah. Just I saw someone, and they just disappeared. And I was like, okay, that was weird. Now, Barbara, you, you did a, a aircraft carrier, right? The Hornet. The Hornet. Uh, did you spend all night or just with a tour group? Oh, no, no, no. I don't I do not do the tours and I don't do the ghost hunts there. But if you go right after a major ghost hunt, um, the energy is all stirred up and you get some really nice stuff. Oh, the cool. feeling is amazing, yeah. Uh, yeah, FYI, uh, that stateroom will go for about $499 a night. 
Yeah, we yeah. saw that. I was like, if we ever become rich. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because right now I can't see spending five hundred dollars a night for one room. Yeah, for one night. Oh my gosh! (laughs) I'm usually, you know, scouting out the cheapest hotels. You know, so (laughs) if you do Alcatraz, there is an evening tour, Um, and and that's probably the best. Uh, They you can't stay overnight. That's a a whole different ballgame. But uh, the evening tours are nice because it's after the crowds are thinned out and you get all that activity. And yeah, uh, yeah, the isolation rooms will, yeah, scare, you'll have fun. Scare the pants off of you. You'll have fun. Yeah. <laughs> I have fun everywhere I go. <laughs> Just take a sweater; it's that. cold. Yeah. Even if we don't catch something, I'll scare somebody. <laughs> oh yeah, he's famous. I always warn people when they join the team or they do, you know, investigations with us. Will will lurk in a corner, and he will turn the corner, and he will scare you because he's just standing there and he's staring at you. <laughs> um, but he he's uh, done investigations with me to where don't leave your recorder sitting somewhere on its own. Yes, don't leave your recording by itself because he will whisper sweet nothings into it, and. <laughs> He will also wait for hours on end for you to walk by just so he has the opportunity to jump out at you. Sounds like me play when I used to play laser tag. <laughs> <laughs> Except I wasn't I was just waiting to snipe people when they came by and shoot them so they couldn't get to the base. Well our our team member Dave, he's notorious for like putting a recorder somewhere and walking away from it. Cause he loves listening to EVPs. I mean he'll to listen to him all day long if you can. Well, we were at this one location and he left it sitting in a room. For like an hour, two right. hours or something like that. Yeah. It's been running. So I went and whispered sweet nothings in it. And then I got a little demonic in it. <laughs> and I didn't think he would fall asleep listening to EVPs. Because you're not supposed to. Because you're not supposed to. <laughs> but apparently he, he'll lay in bed at night and he'll listen to EVPs and... Uh, he fell asleep listening to this one and woke up in the middle of the sweet nothings in the demonic voice and had nightmares for about a week. Hey. <laughs> Nothing like programming somebody to have night terrors. There yeah, that's go. a good that's a good paranormal hazing. <laughs> I think it took him a minute to realize it was Will too. <laughs> hey, he's all I woke up and I, I had to make sure I wasn't being violated. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I did that. I left one in a it was in a house, and I left one in the bathroom. And uh, I think it was some guy who was with us uh, on the investigation. But I was listening, and all of a sudden, you hear this Henry, and the guy, one of the guys that was with us. He was from Wales, so he had that English accent, and that's the right. way it sounded on the on the EVP. <laughs> but then a little bit later, I caught the same thing, only it was more exasperated, like Henry. <laughs> so I, I can't say for sure. He said it; he it wasn't him, but I guess a, a ghost can pick up somebody else's voice pattern or something, but. All right. Well, we'll we'll admit when it's him because of the fact that we don't want to, you know, mess up EVPs. So he warned Dave, hey, when you listen to the recorder, I left something special for you. (laughs) So he did warn Dave. So Dave knew something would be there and we'll we'll warn you, you know, hey, I left something special in your recorder Uh, because we don't want to mistake it for paranormal. But we do. We do take this seriously. But at the same time, you've got to have fun with it because it can get boring. You know, you can go to a location for five hours and nothing happens. Yes. So we kind of sometimes keep ourselves entertained. <laughs> but then you without could, contaminating the field, you know, but you can go back to the same place again in a month and you might pick up two or three things. Yes, uh, exactly. They don't they don't play on cue. Uh they play when they want to. And yep. That's about exactly. It, so. There's been times that we've gone to a location it's been nonstop, gone back a second time, nothing. Yeah. 
Yeah. So. So do you work? Do you depends. work with um, with uh, psychics or mediums? We do not have them on our teams. No. Uh, we consider our team more scientific, so to say. Everything we present to a client, we want to honestly be able to say, we can't disprove this. We don't know what it is. We don't want to go off feelings. And if we have personal experiences, we tell the client, we cannot prove this. This is only something personal, but this is what you know, we felt or whatever. So we don't use the psychics and things like that just because of the fact that a lot of them kind of want to go in there and present what they feel, and we don't like to present what we feel. We want to present what we found. Right, unless you got uh, collaboration uh, with what they're saying. Uh, it, it's right. hard to, you know, do that. I mean, there's a couple of them that uh, I will take with me sometimes, um, but just because they might be saying this is over here, that's over there, I take it with a grain of salt because you can't prove it. Uh, right. However, we did a house up in Franklin one time, and I had a uh, psychic there, and uh, uh, it was her, myself, and uh, one other guy sitting in the living room. And supposedly in this house, there was a little girl. And I kept trying to ask questions for the little girl, you know, and get her to come and say something. And all of a sudden... The uh, psychic says, she said she misses her mommy. Of course, uh, we didn't hear anything. That's just what she said. And then uh, a little later, um, I was I was fiddling with a camera, and uh, I wanted to uh, see if I could just take a picture and capture her because she had told me that the little girl was standing in front of me. So I'm trying to get the camera ready to take her picture and stuff, and the other guy, uh, Mark, he said, honey, can Henry take your picture? And, uh, of course, when we go back and listen to all the recordings, when she said she misses her mommy, right after she says that, you hear a little girl saying, mommy? And then with the picture, we, uh, uh, she said, I'll be smiling. <laughs> And then a little bit later, there was a dark entity in the house that come up front, and you could feel it. the atmosphere changed. And I said, you know, we're still trying to talk to the girl. She said, she's not here. She's back in the house hiding. And as soon as she said that, the recorder picks up, I'm hiding. <laughs> so oh, wow. when you get collaboration like that, you can't deny that they were tuned into something. So Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing when you got something to back up what they're saying. Right, right. And you don't get it too often. But when you do, I mean, it really stands out and you say, oh, look, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so. Yeah, because we've had people tell us that they've had psychics come in and say this, this, and that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then we'll go in and nothing we get matches what they were what told. What they were saying, right, right. <clears throat> so. Anyway, uh, our time is uh, winding right on down. Uh, Barbara, you have uh, anything else you'd like to ask? Uh, I have a whole bunch of questions here. <laughs> We're not going to get to any of them. But um, I guess my, uh, the question that I asked um, uh, before, which was uh, your aha moment. Uh, Becky, uh, did you have that aha moment? Uh, you know, I've had experiences my whole life, and I would have to say what really got me going, why, what, how, when, um, dealt with when I lived in a haunted apartment in Toledo. I literally had a picture frame flip on a wall and break. It literally flipped. Uh, so I think that's what really got my curiosity like up going, how did that happen? How can they do that? And I think that was one of the most wow moments for me. Uh, since doing this, I've had a ton. I couldn't even start to tell you some of them. I, I'm always the one that gets touched, scratched, hair pulled, bit, you know, butt pinched, uh, <laughs> followed home. I, I've, I've witnessed a lot since doing this. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So I've had so many auditory experiences. I haven't had any physical touching, and I haven't, I've never seen a full body apparition. I haven't seen like a full bodied apparition, but I have seen apparitions, and I've definitely seen a lot of shadows. In fact, we caught a shadow on video behind me at one of our locations. Wow. Yeah, and that's actually up on YouTube, I believe. It mm. should be. It should be, yeah, where you actually see the shadow behind me. And we spent hours and hours trying to debunk that to make sure it wasn't a team member, and it was not a shadow from a team member. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah... I can't say that I've seen a lot. Um, I did see I, when we was in Gettysburg year before last. We was out in a barn that was had been a field hospital, and there must have been ten of us in there. We was all at one end, looking toward the far end of the barn, and I kept seeing these little red dots, four or five at a time, come on. They'd be on for just a bit, and then they'd go off. And I kept looking around to see if it was a reflection off of something, lights, you know, anything. Couldn't see anything. And finally, I, I, I asked everybody, I said, does anybody else see those little red dots? And, and every one of them, yeah, we see them. I said, well, what is it? And he said, it's the Confederate soldiers smoking cigarettes. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Which matched. That's yeah, I mean, it matched it because it wasn't a reflection off of anything, but they'd, they'd come on, it'd, it'd get bright, and it'd be on for, you know, just a little bit, and then it'd go out. And it's pretty interesting. Very cool. So, all right, we're uh, down to two minutes. I want to give, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to be with us tonight, but I want to give you a chance to tell everybody how they can uh, follow you, listen to you, all the good stuff if they want to check you out, and then stay on until after we're off. Okay. Um, you can find out about our tours and pretty much our team and everything at TucsonGhostTour.com. And Mysteries Explained airs every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on Spreaker. It, we're part of the Voice Carry Network, uh, Voice Carry Radio Network. And um, I write for Tucson Happenings, which is a monthly article online. We're writing our first book, which is due out next October. October. And you can find us on every social media out there. We have Facebook under Mysteries Explained, Tucson Ghost Company, Tucson Ghost Society. We have Twitter under at Mysteries Radio. Uh, I have Instagram under, I think it's Becky at Tucson Ghost CO. Uh, Uh we're on everything, basically. Yeah. You can find Becky, you can find myself, you can find the company, the radio show, whatever it is. All you got to do is type our name in, you'll find us. Yeah. And pretty much everything we share is public, so it's pretty easy to find us. All right. Yeah. Jeff? Uh, well, you can go to our official website, which is theparanormalview.com. Uh, we're on Facebook. Uh, just go to facebook.com slash theparanormalview, all one word. There we are. Uh, you can follow me on both Twitter and Instagram uh, under the uh, handle at Real Badger, R E A L B A D G E R. Oh, and on Twitter, you can follow my short film, which is uh, Bucky underscore film. And that's also on Facebook, Bucky Film. All right. Listen to us next week. We'll be live from Gettysburg. So until well, then, this is Henry Foister, Jeffrey Gould. You have been listening, Barbara Duncan, to the Paranormal View on the Para-X Radio Network. Join us again next week at the same time for more of The Paranormal View.